I hope you all feel much smarter now with a little better understanding of what we need to do here. So as you can see, there's a thousand different ways that we can hook up our system. You have no idea how many times I've walked into people's uh, surround sound setups and found them hooked up with five different wires. They're hooked up with component video, composite video, HDMI, coax, every single wire. They've hooked them all up to the surround sound receiver and they're just thankful that the thing turns on when they want it to turn on. Forget about maximizing quality. They're just glad it turns on. Okay, that's not acceptable. We're not doing that here. We are going to nail this thing. We're going to make it rad, okay? Perfect for everybody. So let's get to know the receiver a little bit. This is not an advertisement for this receiver. This just happens to be the one I'm working with. So uh, I'm sure a lot of the features here will match up with what you have. On the back, first of all, this is USB. It says DC out. If you have a USB port with a DC out, that means that that thing does not read data from that USB. It's just a power, just a power supply. So you can charge something on there. This one's actually intended for an adapt for uh, an accessory for the Yamaha. But I can plug my phone in or something like that and I can get power. Okay, this is a dual HDMI out. Okay, HDMI 1, HDMI 2. Um, this one right here, if you look real closely, let me see if I can zoom in on that sucker. Real small lettering right there says ARC. Beware of ARC. Stay away from ARC. ARC is audio return channel, which they used to think it'd be pretty cool if you could run one HDMI cable. I guess they, it's, this is a new receiver, so they still think it's cool. That you can run an HDMI cable from your receiver to your TV, and the TV can send audio back to your receiver. So if you're streaming YouTube or something like that from your TV, Instead of the sound coming out of the TV, it could go through the audio return channel, come back out here through the receiver, and you can have uh, your TV sound through your receiver. Bad, bad, bad. Okay, when you need, when you use the ARC, you have to activate functions like HDMI CEC and other HDMI controlling devils. We don't want those. Turn those all off. HDMI CEC is bad. When you HDMI CEC, what that is is when I hit power on my Blu-ray player. My receiver says, oh, he wants to watch Blu-ray. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna turn on and I'm gonna go to the Blu-ray channel. And then the TV says, oh great, I'm also gonna go to the Blu-ray channel. No, we don't want that. That's gonna start, it starts messing things up and then you turn off the Blu-ray player, but you're watching TV. And since you turn off the Blu-ray player, it says, oh, you must be done watching TV. I'm gonna go ahead and shut off everything. No, I'm not done watching TV. I'm just done with the Blu-ray player. So it's a mess. Don't use it. Don't use your audio return channel. That's a cool feature that sounds like, but useless. Okay, there's your HDMI outs. Up here are your HDMI ins. As you can see, we've got a plethora. I do not have near that many uh, devices. So uh, right here is your network connection. This is gonna allow you to stream music and content directly to your receiver. Um, in this case, this receiver also receives IP commands. So if I have an automation system, that, um, let's say a really high-end automation system, and I want to control this receiver, well, those little blasters that you stick on the front, that's caveman. Okay, it's cave if somebody does that to you, they need to be punished. If you have an installer come to your house and he puts a little sticky on the front of your high-end receiver, punch him. Then go to his house, spray paint his front door, key his car, because he hates you. That's the only excuse. That's the only reason he'd ever do that, okay? If you have an, uh, the ability to use IP control, do it. It's so much faster, so much more reliable. You can get two-way communication. It's, it's, it's the only way to go, okay? So I love this network connection for the network because I do stream music directly to my receiver, but I also control my receiver through that too. Okay, this is a wireless dongle. I'm not gonna use it because I don't believe in wireless. So uh, I just put it on there because it came with it. All right, moving down, RS-232. This is another way that you can control your uh, system. You can send commands. Nobody likes IR, you know, high-end installers, they don't like IR, it's, it's unreliable, it's messy, those sticky things come unplugged, it's just a pain in the butt. Um, so RS-232 is another option. Um, I prefer network, but RS-232 is good too. Okay, over here, now speaking of which, it says, let me see if I can zoom in, I'm sorry if this guy's shaky, it says, Remote, in, out, in, out, what? Okay, 
So we just talked about how you can use those little blasters, those little infrared blasters, and you could stick it to the front of your receiver. Well, those things always come unstuck. They're terrible. If you have a receiver that does not have RS-232 and does not have network capabilities, or if you do not have a remote control system that's capable of doing those, do not stick a sticky on the front of your receiver. You use these guys here. This is infrared control. So out of your infrared controller of your, um, you know, your video, I'm sorry, your remote control uh, brain, there should be some type of mini, like a headphone jack. This is called a mini, a 3.5 millimeter mini is what it's called. There should be a mini that comes out and that mini would go out to your blaster. Well, in this case, you get a mini to mini. So you come out of your remote control processor with one mini and go in with your other mini. Okay, uh, that's another option. Um, I've done that a thousand times. Um, people that just don't have a need for a fancy surround sound uh, control system. So you just go right there. I are in on the back, but you never blast the front. Never blast the front. Only terrorists and cavemen do that. Don't blast the front. You come into the back, RS-232, network. Never blast the front. Can't say that enough. All right, trigger out. One, two. The trigger is just like that. It triggers an event. So a trigger um, is usually hooked up to like say a projector screen. So when I want to watch, say this surround, this surround sound receiver was hooked up to a movie theater downstairs in your basement. Well, when I um, hook the trigger up to the movie screen, I turn the receiver on, it activates the trigger, it sends 12 volts over to the movie screen, and the movie screen says, oh, time to drop. So he turns down. So I can trigger, say, the screen with one, and I can trigger, say, the projector with the other. So I got two triggers here, okay? Um, oh, love this component video, big fan. Big fan of component video. Too bad we don't use it anymore. Loved it when it's out. I've got a uh, component video out. And I've got three component video inputs. We're going to use those today. All right, moving over here to the left. This is the phono input. The phono input is your old record player. Um, believe it or not, record players are making a comeback because they uh, it's the best sound quality that you can get. So pure vinyl on a nice record player, that's your money right there. There's your ground screw with your two inputs. That's phono. All right, everything else right here is going to be pretty standard. This is audio video one. Composite video, composite audio, yellow, white, red. Not high definition, but still pretty reliable. What is that down there? Oh my gosh, it's a digital coax. It's orange. Now you're looking at this going, wait a second, why would somebody use composite video, standard crappy video, maybe some analog audio, and then use this digital? Well, uh, we'll get there in a second. Okay, moving on. AV1, AV2, these guys are identical, AV3. Look down at the bottom of AV3, we have an optical. We have another optical in AV4. We have an optical here, but as you can see, that one is AV out. So if you wanted to hook up to another device and put a digital output right there, that's how you're gonna do it, okay? Now these are just pure audio connections. Audio one, audio two, look at that. There's another optical there, digital coax, audio three, Oh my gosh, what is this? Multi-channel input. What the heck? All right, so if you have a really nice audio processor, so these have audio processors built inside of them. These, all these receivers have audio processors built inside of them. But if you have one that's better, then you can come out of your multi-channel output on your um, audio processor and go into the multi-channel input. So if you plug into the, these multi-channel inputs, it bypasses the audio processors that are inside of this thing and uses whatever signal you're sending to it, okay? This was actually kind of popular back when receivers didn't have surround sound built into them. And so you had to have a Blu-ray player that had surround sound built into it. You'd have the Blu-ray player with the surround sound built into it, it would wire into the multi-channel input and that's how you would get um, all of your different signals, okay? That's all of them there. Zone two out. You have a zone two out, you have a zone three out. What that is, is this, this is a three zone receiver. It actually has amplifiers to power my living room, my 7.1 in my living room, plus two other pairs of speakers, two other rooms. So one room would be zone two, one room would be zone three. So if you have, um, this has the amplifier built in, but if you have really nice amplifiers, say you went down, you bought some Macintosh amplifiers, there's no way in the world you wanna use um, the amplifiers that are built into this, you could come out of that, okay? Same thing with this pre-out. Oh, sorry, I'm all over the place here. Same thing with the pre-out. 
um, you have one pre-out for each speaker. So if you decide that you have really nice amplifiers and you don't want to use the amplifiers built into this system, then you can use the pre-outs. See here we have a subwoofer, subwoofer, rear, front. This receiver can, can uh, control two subwoofers. It does not power the subwoofers, it only controls the subwoofers. There's no powered amplifier for the subwoofers here. You have to use a powered sub, which is very standard in the market. As a matter of fact, if you have a passive sub that doesn't have power, forget about it, it's crap, okay? So here we go. Uh, rear sub, front sub, uh, that one's just your center channel. Going down here to the bottom, you've got your antenna inputs. Uh, people still use those, FM and AM. And down here, you have all of your speaker inputs. I'll show you how to use these speaker inputs um, with banana clips and without, okay? So surround, remember surround right there. If you're using a 5.1 system, the surround is your back speakers. Right next to that is surround back. Surround back would be if you're using a 7.1 system. If you're not using a 7.1 system, you won't put anything on the surround back. Sometimes the surround back speakers also double as zone two. So you can have a 7.1, or a 5.1 and zone two. That's very common, very common in your mid-range receivers. Okay, moving over, I've got zone two. If you notice here, it says extra speaker two. I don't know if you can read that. It can be zone two, zone three, or presence. Well, um, you, can, you can call these speakers whatever you want. You can assign them to different purposes. I can assign them to zone two, zone three, or, or the present speakers, which present speakers would almost be like a 9.1 system. Um, I'm not gonna get into what those are. Uh, I'm not using those, most of you guys aren't gonna use them. I'm not gonna get into it. Okay, my center, my front right, front left, and here's my other zone. Okay, so this guy powers a 7.1 system plus two zones. Now, uh, a little bit ago, I just mentioned about nice receivers, middle range, high end. This is obviously, this is a pretty high end. This is um, not Yamaha's top model. This is their second, uh, second from the top. Um, I recommend spending uh, around $500 to start for your receiver. They're going to have something on there called HDMI up conversion. Sometimes they call it HDMI upscaling. So if you look over here, I've got composite video. I've got component video. And then I've got HDMIs. This receiver has HDMI up conversion. That means no matter what I plug into this, any video quality that I plug into this, it's automatically gonna turn that, it's gonna upgrade that signal into an HDMI signal. So I can plug in a Wii over here, Wii with a red, white, yellow, um, an old DVD player, a VCR, uh, an old, um, uh, another old DVD player, or I don't know, anything else. I'm gonna have a TiVo here with component video. I can plug in all these different video sources here, and then boom, one HDMI out to the TV, and I don't have to switch inputs on the TV anymore. I'll leave my TV on HDMI one forever, and every time that I change inputs on this receiver, it automatically changes the video. So it's an upgrade in picture quality a little bit. It does a little bit of upgrade in picture quality, um, but it's an upgrade in, in connectivity. It's great, fantastic. Um, I really don't recommend buying a receiver unless it has HDMI up conversion or HDMI up scaling. It's really important. Um, if you do not have HDMI up scaling or up conversion, don't hook up your video to the receiver. Don't hook up any video to the receiver. The re video all has to go to the TV. So the receiver only gets audio. Okay? Now, so that's this that up conversion is going to be in about the $500 range. Also in about the same range is going to be something called assigning inputs. So we talked a little bit ago about why is there a digital coax or an optical audio tied to these low quality signals? Well, the reason is, is these are assignable. So if you look, it says one coaxial, two coaxial, three optical, four optical, five optical, six coaxial. I can actually assign these inputs to any video input that I want. I can assign these audio inputs to any video input that I want. So I can take my, uh, my old TiVo and I can hook my old TiVo up to the video here and I can pick up this audio here. And then in the menus, uh, when I fire this thing up, all I have to do is just assign the two together. We'll do that. I'll show you guys how that works. So now that you guys got to know my receiver, let's start making some connections.